So this video takes place in what was, to me, one of the most very interesting places I went to. So uh, a couple people from the science club, um, Elise, who studies pulsars, and Sergey, who's an um, engineer in this giant radio telescope, took me to this place. And we traveled in this Soviet car, and it's just this fascinating place. So there's, um, we got telescope cats, we got this just gigantic radio telescope that, you know, watches um, space and, and, and records it through radio waves. And it goes two kilometers in each direction, so it's just absolutely gigantic and there's all these passages and tunnels underneath it and this old kind of almost sci-fi looking equipment so this is the first in a series of two videos and this one we're just going to kind of go to the telescope we're going to see the cats kind of see what the people are up to what the place is like and the second video um sergey is going to show us around and he's going to show us all like this old equipment and take us in the tunnels and show us all this crazy stuff and this this was recorded in february and the reason I'm only posting it now is because the Rona hits and I got a bit distracted by all those things. Um, but I think now is a good time to post it and hopefully everyone finds this interesting. Right now I'm with Elisa Shevtsova yes. and she's a radio astronomer here yeah. in Kharkiv. And where are we right now? Uh, now we are at Radio Astronomy Institute of National Academy of Science of Ukraine. And now we are going to visit UTR2 telescope. Ukrainian T-shaped uh, radio telescope. So this will be some giant telescope somewhere outside yeah. of Kharkiv. Yes, it's outside of Kharkiv, so we will drive for about one yeah. hour. Yeah. So we're going to start our journey and we also have a familiar face with us. Yes. <laughs> So here's a uh, uh, Sergey uh, Sergey uh, Yurin, who we walked around with Kharkiv with a little while ago. So he's going to come as well. So we're on the way to the radio telescope now, and we're in a Volga, which is this old Russian car, and it's very shaky. There's no noise cancellation, and uh, that's the perfect thing to uh, drive to go up to the way to the Ukrainian radio telescope. I guess this highway is we're you know heading to this giant radio telescope, but. This also goes to Donetsk, right, where the yes, war with exactly, Russia is. Exactly, exactly. So the antennas for the telescope. Yes, it's a huge antenna, right? One kilometer long. You see here. Oh, it lasts a whole kilometer, wow. Yes. Okay. So you really actually do mean live here, not just work here. Yes, yes. actually live yes. for, we come here for a week to observe and actually sleep here and live here. Oh, wow. And yeah. we have kitchen here and... Uh, Canteen and bathroom. everything and showers. So we can live here for some time. Usually we come here for a week. Tele telescope kitties here. Yeah. So you said that these were um, one of the staff had this cat. This. Yeah, this one. It's Leopold. And this is a big kitty, very big, fluffy kitty. But I will, will don't touch him when he's eating. Yeah, definitely not. We'll stay away there. And what was this one named? Uh, Fritzik. 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 Kitty, kitty, kitty. He likes to speak. So they're both very friendly. Yeah, and, friendly yeah. and you said wow. Leopold will sometimes um, come back after a few days, he'll yeah, leave. Yeah, he likes to walk or to find uh, your cat. <laughs> and it's not very easy to find your cat here. So. I was about to ask if there's a lot of hot girl cats around the telescope or not. And yeah, Fritzik is very interested in my shoes. So they usually has, have to go to the nearest villages, which are five kilometers away. And that's where they find the women? Yeah. 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 There is also an optical observatory, but I'm not sure there are cats now. There's none at the optical observatory. So this is where the cats are hanging out near? 
Yes, you so see on the right there is a dome, white dome, and that is the optical observatory of our university. Why, uh, why That's the one. Dome? Okay, yeah, I see that in the distance. Mm -hmm. So you can take a shot from that point. The whole telescope, it's only a place for one or two persons. So. Okay, so we're going to go, uh, uh, this is what you were warning me about? That's yeah. a little yeah. discussion? Yeah, it's okay. about high. Be careful, yeah. the stairs are slippery. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is a little sketchy, yeah, for sure. saying in, in that direction it's going how many kilometers? Kilometer, kilometer, kilometer. Okay, so we're just right in the middle of it. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. And this isn't, yeah, you don't normally think of a telescope looking exactly like this. So. But you know, it's this radio telescope. We'll yeah. find out what that is. Yeah, yeah, this is a radio telescope. Wow. Oh, how's he doing? Oh, he's purring. Yeah. Oh, that's he so likes cute. Attention. Oh. Well, I imagine when people are here for a whole week and after they're done with the telescope, they have nothing to do but pay attention to the cat. <laughs> so it's perfect. Oh. That little vicious wild animal. And that fluffy tail, like oh my god. Telescope kitties. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when they talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is a radio telescope and what do you do here? Okay, so you see the huge area of these antennas is all of them makes a huge UTR2 radio telescope. Ukrainian T-shaped radio telescope model 2, which receive cosmic signals from all over the universe and we study the universe with radio waves. So usually when we refer to a radio telescope we think about dish, huge dish antennas which are 100 meters in diameter, but when we need lower frequency we need bigger antennas it's, and it is impossible to make a dish antenna of about 2 kilometers long. This radio telescope allows us to make antenna two kilometers long by one kilometer that direction. It makes a T shape, one kilometer to the south, one kilometer to north, and one kilometer to west, and it makes the whole radio telescope. Uh, when we want to receive the signal, this telescope, uh, we somehow want to direct it to the source we want to, to discover or find or uh, to receive the signal from. And uh, for dish antenna it is quite easy. You can rotate your antenna and point it to the source you need. But for such a radio telescope it is on the ground and you can't rotate it. So we can rotate it only with electrical lengths, uh, which makes it a phased antenna array. What is the principle of this radio telescope? You have many, many uh, identical antennas here. But let me explain you on two antennas. For example, you have two antennas and you have signals from them with the cables come to the central building and add one another. When you have a uh, source directly in Venice, the signals from this source come directly to these antennas, come to cables and add simultaneously. When, when you have the source here, the signal to this antenna comes faster than to this antenna. And to add them, uh, you need to slow down the propagation of this signal to add them simultaneously in the receiver. So what is the, the, the easiest way to make this signal wait for this signal? Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. So the easiest way is to add the cable, the long long cable that will, uh, the, this signal will propagate through this cable and wait for this signal to add this simultaneously. 
So we have special underground, underground tunnels where all these cables are stored and special system adds cables to these signal paths and uh, it can, uh, can see this radio, make see this radio telescope different sources on the sky. So you can actually rotate, electrically rotate this mm -hmm. antenna array to any point on the sky without rotating it physically. So this is the principle of this radio telescope. It seems very dark here after the snow outside, but it's more or less enough. Actually, I came here to switch on and off the receiver because it shows something went wrong. Uh, this is the receiving equipment room of Gurt radio telescope. Uh, it's better to store the receivers near the antenna, so we adjusted this building to to store receivers here and here is an optical wire to the main building okay so elise is here and she wants to tell us about pulsars and what she's studying here uh, hi yes i'm studying pulsars but not ordinary uh, their pulse but an mls intense pulses uh, and quickly, pulsars are compact objects, uh, very dense, and they rotate uh, with very different pul uh, period from pulsar to pulsar. So it can be uh, 3 seconds or even 24 seconds for the longest period for pulsars. And it can be millisecond uh, period. Uh, but it's, uh, for me, interested my interest is uh, pulsars with uh, uh, second and millisecond uh, uh, period. So we find anomalously intense pulses that are uh, rare. Uh, they are one or two percent from all pulses. Uh, so, uh, but we find that it's very interesting and informative. For us, uh, because we think that it is amplified this in this pulse that we can see very uh, good is amplified by pulsar ionosphere. So, uh, processing this pul pulse, we can find something about magnetosphere pulsar and find what is the uh, model of uh, origin of this uh, emission. I just love that tail. Like this one really puts it in perspective what the tail is like. Hi. I got a view of the car this time. This is uh Volga. So I hope everyone found that interesting. To me, it was one of the highlights of my trip to Kharkiv. Um, so like I said, there's going to be a second part of this video and um, be sure to, you know, I'll put the link up here to that and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share if you want to see more. I'm going to go with the same people I met at the science club to all kinds of other interesting places, including like we're going to feed cats with this babushka that feeds 30 cats. We're going to go to this market looking for gopniks. We're going to find some of the most dangerous places in the city. So...